Praise the Lord, beloved. Such a wonderful morning to be uh, here today to stand and speak the word of God to you. We have had such a wonderful week in the presence of the Lord uh, during this great summit, Standing Power Summit, where we have had different ministers of God, uh, Bishop John Obono, uh, Bishop uh, Obedwanjala, Apostle Nixon Osumba, and myself just come to deliver the word of God at the comfort of your homes. And I am sure that uh, God has blessed you and he has uh, strengthened you, strengthened you uh, by the words that were being spoken by his servants. And I uh, just want to take this opportunity to appreciate them for honoring the invitation and just to become a blessing uh, to us as a church and uh, the body of Christ and you as well who is watching us back there at home. So it's a great honor again just to go to the word of God and share briefly what God has placed in my heart in regards to uh, the theme of this uh, summit, staying power. And I'm sure that God is going to bless you in a special way. So maybe before we go to the word of God, can you allow me to pray? Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you for this opportunity that you have given unto us to share your word. Let it come forth with simplicity and clarity. Let it impact the lives of our viewers, wherever they are watching us from, at the comfort of their homes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Our reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 31, which is our, our theme scripture for this summit today. Uh, so the Bible says in verses number 31, 27 of Acts, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, except these stay in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Paul was not just speaking to the centurions alone, but he was also speaking to the soldiers. And he told them that except these stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. They were in a situation whereby they were between life and death. And the only thing that was left to them was to jump off the ship so that they can save their lives. That is when the Apostle Paul came and said that unless you stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. And therefore, I have titled the theme of my message today, Staying on when it's time to get off. Staying on when it's time to get off. Paul was converted from Judaism to Christianity, where he became a staunch follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was converted from killing the believers and later on he became one of the most effective and uh, effective persons when it comes to serving the purposes of God in his generation. After the conversion of the Apostle Paul, he made it quite difficult for the Pharisees simply because he was preaching and speaking the word of God with a lot of zeal and, uh, and uh, passion that made him to uh, bring uh, insight and open the eyes of uh, the followers, of, of, uh, to open the eyes of the Jews who were staunch believers of the Abrahamic laws. Paul made it uh, difficult for the Pharisees because the Pharisees were losing people who were staunch believers of their Abrahamic laws. And, and uh, therefore, the Pharisees uh, contemplated and uh, thought of a way that they can discipline Paul because many people were being converted, many people were being uh, changed, their lives were being impacted, and they would believe in the gospel that the Apostle Paul was preaching. They were so much excited because uh, they, 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 their hands that were, were cuffed were, were, were being uncuffed. Their lives were being freed as a result of the message that the Apostle Paul was preaching. So the Jewish rulers had to petition the Roman government to discipline the Apostle Paul for his unruly behavior 
uh, within the Jewish community that was resulting into the conversion of many uh, people into faith. So Paul got arrested, gone from judgment hall to judgment hall, and uh, has now petitioned the governor because it was too much. So Apostle Paul petitioned the governor so that he can go to Caesar in Rome and defend himself against the false accusation leveled against him. So when you read the book of Acts chapter 27 from verses 1, the Bible says, and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus band. Now, before we go to our theme scripture, Paul had just experienced a great storm in his life because he was arrested after preaching the gospel of the good news. Paul was arrested after preaching which caused the conversion of many Jews into Christianity. And he was now uh, not just in one storm, but he was en route into another storm into another storm. So uh, he was currently in one storm and uh, he was about to enter into another storm. And we can confidently affirm that uh, today we are in a times and season that uh, some of us, we are either in a storm or we are from a storm or we are almost getting into another storm of life. Some of you are watching me right now. You are either in one of those three categories that I've mentioned. You are either in a storm, or you are from a storm, or you are about to enter into a storm, into another storm. So throughout the life of Paul, he was, he was faced with that challenge that he, had to, that he had to battle with. And throughout our life, all of us will experience storms in our lives. It is important for you to know that the fact that you are born again does not mean that you will not experience the storms of life in, uh, in your journey of faith. The fact that you are born again doesn't mean that the road will be easy and smooth, not at all. It will be difficult and there will be turmoil and persecution at times along the way. So it is important for you to know that throughout your journey of faith in your life, you will experience at times storms of life. Everyone goes through the storms of life and stop storms in life happens for a reason. The reason why storms do happen for you is not so that they can break you, but so that they can make you. It is also important for you to understand that storms are no a respecter of persons. The storms that people face in their day-to-day -day life are no respecter of person. You might be having all the monies that the people that you can mention on the face of the earth, but Storms in life doesn't respect that, doesn't honor that. That is why many people have money, but they are bedridden, they are sick, yet their money cannot help them. There are many people that have a lot of wealth, yet they cannot have the peace of heart and the peace of mind. Many people are going through storms in life, yet they have everything that they might need in their day-to-day -day living. So storms that one might be facing in their day-to-day -day life is no respecter of person. It doesn't care your age. It doesn't care your geographical location. It doesn't care where you are coming from. Somebody said a lizard in Africa does not turn into a crocodile when it reaches the United States of America. You cannot overcome a storm by running from a storm. Not at all. The only way you can overcome another storm is by being optimistic and facing the storm that you're currently in with a well-able mentality, knowing that the God who has taken you through, knowing that the God who has brought you into the storm will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And then it says, David is saying that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
in quotes, even though I walk through the storms of life, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God Almighty is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake you. The Bible says that, Lo, I am with you until the end of days. So it doesn't matter the storms that you are going through in life. God has assured us, God has assured you that he is together with you throughout the storms that you are going through. You are never alone. He is always by your side. So the storms that you are experiencing in your day-to-day -day life doesn't respect your age. It doesn't respect your geographical background. It doesn't respect the money that is in your bank account. Not at all. It's not a respecter of persons. The storms that you might be facing is not a respecter of persons. The Bible says in Corinthians that there is no temptation that has overtaken us. God will never bring a temptation to that that is beyond your ability to bear. God will always bring temptation or rather God will always allow the temptation that come along your way. He will always allow them to come because he knows that you have the ability to overcome. He knows that you have the ability to, to be a victor and not a victim. Pray, praise be to the name of the living God. So I want to challenge, I want to admonish and strengthen you wherever you are watching me from. Some of you are contemplating so many things. Some of you are contemplating of throwing in the towel. Some of you are contemplating of calling it a quit. Some of you are contemplating of closing that business, of closing that shop, of closing that ministry. It is important for you to know that you have brothers and sisters somewhere who also underwent the same challenges, who also underwent the same persecutions, who also underwent the same trials in life that overcame and they are looking at you. Some of them are watching at you from heaven and they are celebrating you knowing that you will overcome just the same way they overcame. You will become a victor just the same way they become victors. Glory be to the living God. So I want to challenge you wherever you are watching. Do not be discouraged. Do not give up. Do not throw in the towel. towel. The God that is in you is greater than the God that is in the world. You will overcome every turmoil in life. You will overcome every challenge in life because he who called you the Bible says that he is faithful. He is faithful. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Storms in life will come suddenly without a warning. Storms in life will come suddenly without any warning. So it is important for you to be prepared anytime for anything. The Bible says that be prepared in and out of season. Why? Because you do not know when the storms in life will come. Luke chapter number 8 verses 22 to 23 talks about a story with of the disciples with Jesus. The Bible says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into the ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Jesus spoke to the disciples and he told the disciples that let us get into the ship. Let us go on to the other side of the lake and they launched out. Listen unto me, ladies and gentlemen. You will never cross over to the other side without first of all facing the challenges and the storms. You will never cross to the other side without battling some forces, powers, and principalities. Because they will never allow you to cross comfortably. You will have to battle and fight and wrestle them. That is why the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, forces, principalities, rulers of darkness. In order for you to cross onto the other side, then get ready for the storms and challenges of life. 
But the good thing is this, because he overcame, you shall overcome. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Because the God who overcame lives in you, then you are definitely an overcomer. Praise be to the name of the living God. So Jesus told his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. So they go on into the ship, and uh, they launched forth, crossing over to the other side. But as they sailed, the Bible says that Jesus fell asleep. And there came a storm of wind on the lake. There came a storm of wind on the lake. I am glad that the storm came not when Jesus was outside the boat, but he was in the boat. Every storm that you face inside your life, every storm that you are going through, doesn't mean that Jesus has left you. He is right there with you. He's right there with you. I repeat the scripture that I quoted. That Jesus said that, Lo, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says that even though a mother can forget her suckling baby, I, the Lord God, will never forget you. I will never forget you. I have written you are the palms of my hands. Are the palms of my hands. So Jesus was in the boat. Storms came when the disciples were with Jesus in the boat. They got afraid, not knowing that they were with Jesus inside the boat. Sometimes when we face the storms of life, we forget that we have Jesus with us. Sometimes when we face difficulties, when we go through, we ask ourselves questions, Jesus, where are you? Where are you? Sometimes when we go through issues of life, we ask questions, did this take you by surprise, God? Where were you? When my son was in that sick bed, giving his last breath, where were you? When my house was being raided on, where were you? When I was being retrenched, where were you? When I was being robbed, where were you? When I was being raped, where were you? When I was experiencing that accident, he was right there with you, and that is why you were alive. That is why you are still breathing. Because if he couldn't have been with you, you couldn't have been where you are today. You couldn't have been where you are today. But as they sailed, the Bible says, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water. And they were in jeopardy. Many other times that when we go through these trials and temptations, many other times that when we face these storms of life, we are filled with fear. We are filled with fear. We are filled with questions in our hearts that at times we don't have the answers. The Bible says that they were filled with fear and were in jeopardy. They woke up the master and they told him, don't you even care that we are dying? Who told you that you were dying? Who told you that you will die in the storms of life? Who told you that you will die through that challenge? Who told you that you will not overcome the trials and the temptations that you are facing? Who told you that bad report? Don't you even care that we are dying? The Bible says that life and death lies in the power of your tongue. Whatever you confess is what you will get. The disciples said, don't you even care that we are dying? How comes you are saying that you are about to die, yet you have the resurrection and the life in you? Glory be to the Lamb of God. 
How comes that you can confess that this sickness is going to take me to the grave, yet you have Jehovah Rapha living and dwelling inside of you? The Bible says that the reason why you are going through those challenges in life, the reason why you are going through those trials in life is so that you can strengthen your other brothers. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Learn your lesson while in the storm. Learn what God wants you to learn while in the storm. Because there is somebody that God is bringing along your way that will need encouragement and strength from you. That person will be encouraged when you share your testimony with him. When you share your testimony with her. Celebrate God while in the storm. Knowing that there is somebody who is being strengthened when you are overcoming. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The scripture that we have just read in the book of Luke chapter 8 states that storms happen in life irrespective of who you are. Storms happen in life irrespective of your stature. Storms happen in life irrespective of your worth. Storms happen in life irrespective of your geographical location. Some of those days when we were kids, we were looking at these prominent people in the country and the way their children are enjoying life. Their children are having everything that they had. Vehicles, money, companies, everything, they matter. And when you look at yourself, you ask yourself a question. God, what did I do wrong to be born in this family? I could have been born in that other family. Those same, same people, they are also experiencing their storms in their level. So storms happen in life, irrespective of who you are. And it is true that not everybody performs well in the storm. Not everybody performs well in the storm. And it is also important to know that not everybody is meant to be with you in the storm. Not everybody performs well in the storm. Not everybody performs well in the storm. That is why when others are going through the storms of life, instead of keeping quiet, when others are going through the night experience in their lives, when other people are going through the night season in their life, their windows are wide open, the doors of their houses are wide open, they receive everybody inside, they talk and engage with everybody, not knowing how they should carry themselves while going through this night experience. They don't know how they should carry themselves when they are going through these storms of life. They don't know who to bring in their life while experiencing this storm of life. I repeat two major things. It is important for you to know that not everybody performs well in the storm and not everybody is, not, is meant to be with you in the storm. In the storm. So when you are going through the night experience, when you are going through the night season in your life, close the door. Close the windows. When somebody knocks at the door, don't open the door for everybody. Get to know who is knocking at the door and what does he want. Because when you're going through the storms of life, not everybody is allowed to enter into your life. Not everybody. Not everybody is meant to be with you in the storm. There are people that are going to celebrate you. There are people that are going to hold you by the hands. There are people that are going to pray with you. That is why God told Moses that when you are up there in the mountain, get specific people that are going to hold you by the hands. When Israel is facing battles, Moses, I know sometimes you get weak 
And when you put your hands down, the Israelites will be defeated. But when your hands are raised up on high, they will continue to win. And because many are the times that Moses, you get tired, I want you to get two young men that are going to hold you by the hand. That are going to hold your hand up so that when you are weak, so that when you are exhausted you are, and you feel like throwing your hands down, the young man can still hold your hands up because not everybody is meant to be with you in the storm. Not everybody will hold your hands. Not everybody will hold your hands while in the storm. Instead of other people praying for you, they will come and they will laugh at you. Instead of other people encouraging you, they will turn and stab you at the back, cause more injury in your life. Not everybody is meant to be with you while in the storm. <coughs> Many other times, when one goes through the storm, they start to lament. Many other times, that when one person goes through the storm, they start to complain, cry, because he's all alone. Many other times, when somebody is going through the storm of life, they start to wonder, why is it that the people that I helped in my life have left me and I am all alone? It's simple, because not everybody is meant to be with you in the storm. Not everybody is meant to be with you in the storm. The people who are with you, if you are not careful, the people who are with you in the storm, if you are not careful, they might encourage you to abandon the ship, to jump off the ship, not because they love you, but because they know that when you overcome these storms of life, what lies ahead of you is much greater than the persecution and the problems and the stress and distress that you are going through right now. That is why the Bible says that our current suffering, our current persecution, our current storm in life cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed to us. Cannot be compared to the glory that lies ahead of us. That is why they will discourage you. That is why they will speak to you to abandon the ship. That is why they will tell you, quit that marriage. And when you quit the marriage, they will come in and take the man that you have just left. They will come in and take the woman that you have just left. They will encourage you to jump off the ship. They will tell you, with this pandemic, your business is not going to work well. Close that business. And when you listen to them and you close their business, you close the shop, you get your stuff out of the shop, you will find them tomorrow in the same, same shop doing the same, same business that you are doing. That you are doing. They will come and tell you, close the church. The church is not working. And when you listen to them and you close the church, you dispose all the church items, you will find them tomorrow in the same, same hall that you used to worship. And they have started a church there. They have started a church there. It is important for you to know those who are going through the storm with you, are they for you or they are against you? Are they for you or they are against you? <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. <coughs> verses 11. The Bible says, Jeremiah 29, verses 11. The Bible says, 
For I know the plans that I have for you. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not for evil. To give you a hope and a future. For I know the plans that I have for you. To give you a hope and a future. Thank you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the storms of life that you're experiencing. It doesn't matter the difficulties that you are experiencing right now. It doesn't matter the hardship that you are going through right now. God is saying that my plans are to give you a hope and a future. A hope and a future. God has something good in store for you after the storm. God has good plans for you after the storm. After this, the Bible says in the book of Job, after this, Job lived. After the storms of life that Job went through, he lived. He lost everything that he had. He lost his livestock. He lost his houses. The only people that were being served were the servants. That even Job's wife told Job, cast God and die. But the Bible says that after the storms of life that Job was going through, he lived. I am here to declare in the name of Jesus, after the storms that you are experiencing in life, after the storms that you are going through, you shall live. None of you shall perish. You are not going to die. None of you shall throw in the towel. You shall live. Glory be to the Lamb of God. For I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. And eventually he shall come for my rescue. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I am here to speak to you today. That yes, your Redeemer liveth. I am here to admonish you today. Yes, your Redeemer liveth. He is by your side. He is inside the sheep with you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I am here to encourage someone that the storm might be unbearable. I am here to encourage you that the turmoil might be tough. The situation might be hard. But it doesn't matter how hard the situation is. Don't leave the ship. Don't throw in the towel. Don't call it a quit. God is on your side. Jehovah Rapha is by your side. El Shaddai is by your side. Don't call it a quit. It's not over yet. You have bled for long enough. You have experienced a lot of heartache. You have experienced a lot of challenges in life. Don't throw in the towel. Jehovah God is going to surprise you. Jehovah God is going to surprise people. There are people that have laughed at you because things have gone from worse to worse. There are people that have laughed at you because you have shared with them your vision. And your vision right now is like nothing. There are people that have laughed at you because you had good plans this year. Now we are almost the end of the year. They are asking you what has happened to your plans and you have nothing to say. Listen to me ladies and gentlemen. One day is like a thousand years before the Lord. God can perform a miracle within a twinkling of an eye. That is going to surprise many. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Chapter 27, the same scripture that we have read. Verses 9. The Bible says, <coughs> Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be hard 
and much damage, not only of the lading and sheep, but also for our lives. Paul told them that the journey will not be easy. Paul told them that the journey will be rough. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Paul told them before the storms, Paul perceived, Paul perceived, verses 10, Paul is saying that, and he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be hard and much damage. What is the meaning of perception? Perception is the ability to see. Perception is the ability to hear. Perception is the ability to become aware of something through your senses. So God revealed to Paul before time that there will be storms ahead. God revealed to Paul that the journey will not be easy. And then Paul said that I perceive. I see that the journey will be difficult. I perceive that it's going to be a rough ride. It's going to be a rough ride. Not just for the sheep, but for us also. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the ride is always not easy. Nobody told you that the road will be easy. But there is one thing that we are sure of. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. The God that called us is faithful until the end. He is faithful until the end. As I pray, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you back to the book of John, chapter number 16, verses 33. John, chapter 16, verses 33. The Bible says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. Jesus is telling his disciples, I have told you all these things. I have not kept anything from you. The reason why I've told you all this is so that in me, not outside Jesus, in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. What did Jesus tell them? Jesus told them that in the world that you are living in, you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration allow me to repeat that I have told you all these things so that in me you will have perfect peace and confidence what were these things that Jesus told them that he had to prepare them beforehand so that they can have perfect peace what were these things that Jesus told the disciples before time so that in him they can have confidence? In the world you are living in, right now, where you are, in the world you are living in, you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration but be of good cheer says the Lord take courage be confident be certain be undoubted for I have overcome the world I have overcome the world but Jesus how comes you are telling us that we are going to have tribulations, trial, distress, persecution. And on the other side, you are telling us that it is not us, but it is you 
who has overcome the world. The scripture continues to say, I have deprived the world of its power to harm you. I have refused to give the world the power that they asked for to harm you. I have held back the power from the world so that they can harm you. So you will have tribulations, but you shall not be harmed. You will have trials, you shall not be moved. You will have persecution, you shall not be moved. Glory be to the living God. You will face the challenges of life, but you shall not be moved. Why? Because I have deprived the world of its power to harm you. And, and, I love this part, and I'm finishing with this part. Jesus said, I have not just deprived the world of its power to harm you, but he says, and, I have conquered it for you. I have conquered the world for you. You do not need to fight the world because the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord and the Bible says that I have conquered the world for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are more than a conqueror. You are a victim, never a victim. Jesus Christ has conquered the world for you. You don't need to fight any battle. Jesus has fought the battle. Jesus has won it for you. The victory belongs to us. Jesus has fought and he has won and he has risen again and he has given us the victory. He has given us the victory. So our part is to sit back let him fight. After fighting, he gives us the victory and the referee will lift up our hands and say that you have won. And Jesus up in heaven where he is, he looks down at you with a smile and he says, I am proud of you, son. You have fought the good fight. You have run the race. You have kept the faith. You have stood in the sheep. You have decided to stand in the sheep even when there was every good reason to give up. Even when there was every good reason to get off the sheep. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. I don't know whatever thing you are going through, but the God that placed in my heart to put up this summit had an agenda with you. And wherever you are, I just want to speak the grace of God over your life. I want to speak the peace, the shalom of God over your life. That even through this turmoil, persecution that you are going through, God will give you the peace that you need. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Just the same way Jesus in the sheep come to the storms when the disciples were crying for their lives. We stand in the authority that you have placed in our lives and we speak peace. In every storm that our viewers are going through, we speak peace. In every turmoil that they are experiencing throughout this season, we speak peace. Some of them are contemplating so many things. Some of them are thinking of throwing in the towel. Some of them are thinking of calling it a quit. Some of them are thinking of even committing suicide. I speak the peace of God. The shalom of God. Shalom of God. 
Shalom of God. In the name of Jesus. You shall overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. The God that is in you is greater than the devil that is in the world. You have overcome. In the name of Jesus. May God fill you with this grace. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Those that are shaking their bodies, we speak healing and health. In the name of Jesus. May Jehovah Rapha reach you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. You are watching me today. You are not born again. You haven't given Jesus Christ your life. And you just feel like this is a good opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. Wherever you are watching, I would like to pray with you. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me to be your own. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. You are born again. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Our numbers are on the screen. Please call us, text us, let us know where you are watching us from. We'll reach out to you. We'll visit you. We'll pray with you. We'll welcome you into this great family. Churches are opening up soon. I want to take this opportunity also to invite you to worship with us at Redeemed Tabernacle Church, House of Solution Church for All Nations, Komarok. We are situated in Masimba, Nyamavila, a hundred meters behind Overcomers Education Center. Join us every Sunday from uh, uh, 9.30 in the morning as we dive into the word of God, worship and praise God, and God will bless you so, so, so much. God bless you and have a blessed day afternoon. Shalom and the peace of God be with you in Jesus name. Amen. I overcame.